been uh, past due in uh, doing a video. I get a lot of people emailing me or putting in the comments asking, what am I going to use this for? Um, how, uh, how much can I get one? Can I buy one from you? Where can I get one? So I just thought I'd give a quick update, passing on a little bit more that I've uh, learned since I started playing with this. Uh, the most popular one is how much do they cost and where do you get them. You used to be able to get them for pretty cheap. Now that, well, now that people want the batteries, uh, before the the junkyards didn't know what to do with them. They were afraid of them. They just wanted to get rid of them. Nowadays, they know what they're actually worth. So. Uh, they are charging it. This one I just uh, got was from uh, Bessler Auto Parts in Wilder, Kentucky. Uh, it was uh, $2,540 plus a $100 core charge. I don't understand the core charge, but hey, it's $2,600 for what the charge is. Uh, don't, don't go contacting them. You're, we're welcome to, but they just happen to have a Chevy Bolt battery. They don't specialize it. Uh, really, I definitely recommend just calling around your local junkyard and seeing what they have. Um, I, uh, chances are though, the, the places that you call aren't gonna have it, but you can ask them to look in their database because uh, back in my high school days, I actually worked at a wrecking yard and if you didn't have the part the customer needed, you can go on, uh, uh, on the computer, type up, find out where the nearest one is. Tell them you want a non-interchange part, any Chevy Volts, and uh, tell them what, what the closest is. Uh, the shipping on these is not cheap, so you, there are places online you can find it and, and order them, but the shipping is going to be, the uh, uh, cheapest I pay is 150 the most expensive I saw was 450 I told them no, um, and because this is a 400 pound ba uh, battery, it's, they have to put it on the pallet. For whatever reason, this one I just got in, they took the uh, fiberglass cover off. Uh, luckily, it made it through unscathed. I have no idea why they did that, but uh, you always have to be careful too when you're asking them to uh, to deal, deal with this. You know, you may or may not get the end connectors. Uh, it may get damaged. Uh, this, uh, uh, you know, taking off the cover, for instance, um, they may not know what they're doing. I or, when I ordered this, uh, I've ordered four batteries now, and two of them have actually made it here without incident. This battery, I originally received as this. Volt DC to DC converter. For whatever reason, the guys at the junkyard who don't know any better thought that a DC to DC converter that weighs 10 pounds and can be shoot UPS was the same thing as a 400 pound battery that has to be shipped via freight. So that's the, the challenges and stuff that you deal with. Uh, as far as buying from me, I'm not in the business of taking uh, as being a middleman. I don't have, don't like middlemen because they don't really add any value. Um, I'll probably have extra modules from my packs uh, because I can't use the entire voltage range and I'll talk about that more in another video. Um, but really the best bet if you want a, a car's worth or anywhere close to it is call your local wrecking yard and see what they can do. Uh, they may not have them right, uh, available right away, but uh, you know, check with them you know, after a month, see if they have it, tell them to keep an eye open if you get a relationship building eventually some some there's been 60,000 thereabouts bolts that have been made somewhere some of them someone's going to run into a tree or another car or something and uh, the cars will get scrapped out and you chances are have a perfectly good battery um, I just showed the other video about the uh, front module there a couple clear uh, things I wanted to correct was uh, I had said so this is a refresher there are the contactors the main contactors, these nice Panasonic units, um, and then the pre-charge resistors. You don't need the BMS to be able to do this. Uh, Mikael sent me a uh, pinout for it, which I'll put up on the web, uh, that you can apply at 12 volts and check the voltage. That being said, unless the pack is actually damaged or has been run completely empty, which is uh, unlikely, there is not, you know, not really any need. All you, know, all you end up doing is finding the state of charge of the battery, which isn't really that helpful. Um, the other thing was the heater. There is a heater, just didn't see it. So this is, there's two of these fittings uh, up front. One is just a coolant passage. The other one looks the same, but it's got a high voltage lead po uh, pointing out, which is obvious now that I think about it. Um, inside, if you unscrew this connector, there is a heating element wound up inside. So this is 
the pack heater so they when you can circulate the coolant through and use that to keep the pack above freezing while charging it goes off of pack voltage and there is a um, is a contactor in there specifically for running this so I thought that was a neat feature uh, it's a amazingly small heater but it's a uh, solid to liquid heat exchanger so it doesn't need to be very big now as far as uh, getting it shipped talked about the cost the other thing is the difficulty um, uh, for our shipping is it's going to show up on a probably a 40 foot box truck uh, an actual full semi truck uh, most uh, actual freight line companies won't deliver uh, to residential areas I'm assuming I'm talking to mostly DIYs here um, and even then you need a forklift or some other means to get it out of the truck because it's six five or six feet in uh, four or five eight feet in the air um, so all that being said you know, definitely try and go to go the route of trying to find something local. Also, that way you're not uh, uh, paying for a bunch of diesel fuel to get burned up between just delivering your your battery. Uh, now, what to do with it? You can keep it exactly the way it is. Obviously, I showed in the video how to tear it all down and, and more about a curiosity's sake. Um, it is mounted to this pretty heavy steel plate underneath. Uh, it's heavy, but it's not very strong. It's designed to be bolted to a Chevy Volt chassis, uh, especially with the plastic cover off of this, you have to be really careful because like on this one, the whole thing is about to fold in half because there's no structure here. Uh, even with the fiberglass piece, there's, there's uh, a divot here that comes down. I don't know if there's a cross member in, in the bolt, but uh, it makes it very, very weak at this point. So you have to do a very, very good job of supporting it uh, and also just trying to find how to make this large T-shape work. Uh, the only, only one that uh, I've heard it fits very well in a, in a, in a golf, but uh, past that, um, best I can figure would be a, uh, if you're doing a truck conversion and you don't want the bed space, you could just take this, throw it on the bed, and uh, 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 start using it for, uh, for a pack. And you have the contactors, have the pre-charge, have the heater, have all the coolant and everything set up. Uh, but you're going to kind of defeat most of the purpose of the bed space, and it's just... Uh, as anyone who's done a, a DIY conversion knows, trying to find space to fit all the batteries, you have to be very space efficient. Uh, unless you're putting into a Chevy Volt, not likely, uh, not very space efficient. So that's what I'm working on here. This is uh, modules I just pulled out of the E30. This is two 48 volt modules. I have two other of these racks that are in the back that have two 48s plus a 24. I can't use all of the modules from one pack because I'm partial to the Soliton controller, and Soliton 1 has a maximum voltage of 345 volts. So this fully charged will exceed that, and um, it, the controller could be damaged, or at the very least won't, be, it won't turn on if you go too high a voltage. So I've broken it, the, this is actually the pack you saw in the video, I broke it down, I made up some plates that replace the uh, factory end plates that allows for the coolant passages still to be used. Um, I use uh, high tensile uh, <clears throat> uh, bolts, actual studs. I don't use grade 2 all thread from Lowe's, as tempting as that would seem. Uh, but you can actually buy a high strength all thread. Clamp the whole system clamps together. They essentially act as really long bolts. In the, in the GM application, it is long bolts, but you know, obviously if you're changing links, then those won't work. Uh, it also gives me a uh, system for being able to account, uh, to attach the, I don't have one over here, but, uh, oh yeah, to be able to attach the either block off plates or nozzles, depending on the cases. I don't have them on here, because this is just a, a test um, to try it out in the E30. Um, been using, it, they're putting these in the E30s, drove it first about a month ago. Uh, the power is really good. I'll do a whole other video specifically talking about the test data for what the power output on this is. You can get up to 350 kilowatts. I'll, I'll throw that out there. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a very high perform, a potentially high performance pack. And uh, but uh, for me, especially for, uh, all the test data that I've looked at, you want to keep your batteries at a nice, cool temperature. Not cool, but uh, just like if it was a person. And so I, uh, for my application where I'm looking at long endurance of high power draws for uh, minutes, you know, a normal car, you're only going to accelerate for a while and then you'll be at cruise. Um, I definitely uh, felt that the retaining the liquid cooling was a, was a necessity. So 
Uh, that's what I've been working on here. So I made up the plates, made up some rails. I've got a uh, Lexan polycarbonate cover. Don't use acrylic, it will just shatter. Uh, but I really wanted to protect um, you know, the exposed terminals here. I could have reused the, the plastic ones, but I had different sizes, etc. And uh, this way I can still visibly see it. And um, yeah, our, the other thing I'm still working on and uh, I've had a little bit of learning experience is getting the high current out. So I first experimented with this is uh, essentially two um, coupling nuts that I put on these M8 studs and use that as a means to uh, turn that into a terminal post, essentially. Um, it worked okay, except uh, it would loosen up over time. And uh, don't, definitely don't want that to happen. When you have a connection get loose, then instantly the resistance starts going up. Then it turns into a resistor heater, and you'll find cables are warm. If you get too far, then you're melting the plastic away, and you're doing damage, and you could have a catastrophic failure. So instead, I have these holes that are here. Uh, it's my original intention that just feed the cables through and make a direct contact. I'm using um, two watt uh, cables, and uh, I'll connect directly there. For 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 trying to get the high uh, power capabilities that these are capable, or power output that these are capable of. Obviously, the stock uh, little straps and connections aren't designed for that. Uh, these pa these modules can put out uh, three times the amount of power that the Chevy Bolt actually ever uses for them. And so, you got to be real careful if you're going to go at higher current levels to look at everything in the line to make sure that you aren't just going to melt a terminal post off and start a fireworks show. Um, you also want to seal this. You don't want water in here, especially if you're going to in an area where you have, say, salt water. Uh, but even just fresh water, you don't want it getting in here. So you want to seal the system up and uh, protect it that way. The fiberglass cover that goes over the bolt is is very well sealed, and they do a nice job of that. You want to you, uh, have your pack sealed up as well. Um, that being said, I'm going to do another video here shortly, talking about the the test data. Uh, in the from the E30 and also a lot of test data that I've covered from the DOE that they've been doing all Department of Energy that they've been doing uh, a lot of uh, testing of these packs and uh, I'll show that in the next video.